everyone, and welcome to episode 75 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay, and this is my YouTube channel where I chat about all of my crafting adventures. Today is September 12th, and I'm coming to you from Surprise, Arizona. Today is actually the third podcast anniversary, so I have been podcasting for three years today, which seems crazy. That's the only way to describe it. It seems crazy. It does not seem like it's been three years. I appreciate every single one of you who watch. Tune in when I post an episode. Thank you guys for, for watching. So today we have a new design to chat about that'll actually, it's gonna go up on September 13th. So by the time this episode goes up, this pattern will be available on Ravelry. So I'm very excited to share this new sock design with you. And we have some stuff that's came in the mail, some prizes for the podcast, two works in progress, zero finished objects, but go ahead, grab a beverage, grab your knitting, and let's get started. So you guys can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady, and we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you search over on Ravelry at the groups tab for Crazy Sock Lady Podcast, it's going to pop up there. That's where you're going to find information about the swap of swaps that are going on, the knit alongs that are going on. There's always fun stuff going on in the Ravelry group, so be sure to join us if you have not already. Show notes for this episode can be found right down here below in the down bar, as well as links to all of the places I've mentioned that you can find me. So just a few Ravelry administrative things to chat about. We do still have the Organized Chaos Swapless Swap open. If you're new to the Swapless Swaps, those are 10 40 yard minis. There's a different yarn dyer each month and they're fingering weight and the price varies from 35 to $45. So right now, Organized Chaos is the yarn dyer that's listed and the money is due when the signups close October 15th. So head over and take a look. I'll link that thread down below if you're interested in getting some fingering weight minis. Then we also have the spring and summer sock Cal open. This ends September 23rd. So we're coming a bit closer to the end. We still have just a little while left. Uh, be sure to get those finished socks entered. And if you have knit one of my sock patterns, you can enter that twice. So just post that entry twice in the finished objects thread. There are chatter and FO threads over in the Ravelry group, so be sure to take a look. I think that's it for Ravelry stuff. Now let's talk about the new design that will be up now. I'm not going to post this episode until Friday, so it'll be up now. I will be sure to link it down below. So this is the Whisper in the Wind Socks. So the yarn that I used for these is Wool Fiend in the Caverns Old Collarway. I love Emily's yarn. Look at those speckles. This pattern may be my, one of my favorite so far. Heel Toe Dosey Doe just may take the cake for the favorite ever, but this one is maybe second. <laughs> Look at that. These are not cables. I want to make sure to mention that because I know some people can be so intimidated by cables, which I say, don't be. They're nothing difficult to do. Um, but this is not a cable. And I have actually recorded a video tutorial that there will be a link in the pattern where I show you how this stitch is created. But this is not a cable. So you have this one stitch here, and then other than that, it's knits and pearls. That is it. It's such a fun pattern. I love the look down the front of the sock that it gives. The pattern does have instructions for a slip stitch heel flap, your gusset, and then my favorite toe. So I was excited about this one, and I, was, I had so much fun recording the video tutorial for that stitch. It's kind of inspired me to maybe venture out a bit more and not be as scared to do any tutorials that come up that I feel like I want to do. So I hope that you guys will head over and take a look at this. Like I said, I will link it down below. And there's a coupon code for this pattern. 
It is, let me double check, Wind 15. That will get you 15% off of this pattern and that will run for the first week that it is released. So that'll start on September 13th and run for until the following Friday. I hope that you guys enjoy that one. I really, I've loved seeing my testers posting the photos and how this yarn or this pattern looks amazing in every single yarn that they have posted. There has not been a yarn that one of my testers has used that I've been like, well, that doesn't play well with that. It has looked amazing in every single yarn that they've used. So I think this one is gonna be a lot of fun and I cannot wait to see what you guys use to work that up. All right, like I said, I don't have any finished objects. None, none. I'm only gonna show two works in progress. Those have got the most work other than design stuff. And I'm not showing my sweater today. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw I had a little bit of an issue with my Rhinebeck sweater that I showed on the last episode. So I, you did the ribbing at the top for the neck and you were supposed to switch to a larger needle. I didn't. I had still been using the regular needle and I had gotten just a smidge further than the point that it was at on the podcast last time. And I just happened to think, well, I was like, my stitches look really good on this. This yarn, which the yarn does have amazing stitch definition, but I was just like, wow, like my stitches look really good. And then it just seriously hit me like a smack in the face. I remembered that there was a larger needle size listed in the pattern. And I thought, when in the world am I supposed to use that? You're normally supposed to switch to that after you do the neck band. Well, I went and I looked through the pattern and it said right there, switch to larger needle after the neck band instructions. I just didn't read that part. <laughs> so I did a little sweater surgery after I had a little bit of a meltdown. There were no tears, but there were some choice words saying, which I don't say very often, but they were said. And I flung my pattern to the other end of the couch. It was, it was definitely a little bit of a meltdown. I was feeling very frustrated that I made that. I mean, I just feel like that's something that I should have seen. Like it was right there. It was nobody's fault but my own. And I think that made me even matter. Um, but I, I loved when I posted on Instagram about it and so many people had done the same thing. It definitely made me feel better about it. So anyways, I took the needles out of the point that I was at, I pulled them out, laid it out on the table, put the smaller size needle or not the smaller size. I put the larger size needle on, um, took the smaller size off cause I'm using my interchangeables for that. So I put the larger size on the correct size and I picked up right after the neck band and ripped back. And I've only done one pattern repeat, which is like four rows since then. So I'm gonna try really, really hard. I've just been super busy with design stuff and a couple of things coming up for here on the YouTube channel that I haven't had time to really sit down and work on that but I'm gonna try my hardest to start making that my evening knitting when I don't have fencing practice to go sit at or something like that. So hopefully there'll be some progress on that. And I have my knit groups flagstaff trip coming up next week. And that's gonna be my main focus on that will be my sweater and my September Desert Vista Dye Work socks that have not been started yet either. So that's where we're at with the sweater drama. You're updated on that. That's why it's not being shown today because there's less progress than there was last time. All right, two sock whips to show you. This one I showed last week and it's in an old bag from Homespun House. These are socks for Wyatt. Okay, I've talked about Wyatt's hand knit sock obsession, which is amazing, many times and he still 100% only wants to wear hand knit socks. So many times we have been out buying clothes or socks or something that the boys need and I'll get socks for Austin and I'll say, why are you sure you don't want some hand knit socks? 
no, why would I want those? So he still loves the handknit socks. That is all he will wear. He had to get rid of like five more pairs the other day. His feet just won't stop growing. So I decided I really need to get on the ball with finishing some socks for him. I kind of took a little bit of a break there. For a while, I always had a pair of socks on the go for him and that seemed to work out good because there wasn't a time, like he would occasionally be like, those don't fit anymore, you know, an older pair. But there was never a time where he got rid of so many at once and he had so little left in his little sock container. Um, so I've got to get on the ball. I've really got to make knitting socks for him a priority since they get used. If it was, he wasn't wearing them as often, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but that's all he wears. So he's totally knit worthy and deserving of me putting extra time into knitting him socks. Anyways, here's where I'm at with sock number one. I worked on this. So last night, I worked on this at Knit Group on Tuesday and I got through the heel flap and turn, I believe, and was on the gusset decreases. And then last night, Wyatt had fencing. So I think I was about right there when we got to fencing. And between fencing class and then just some relaxing knitting while we watched Golden Girls last night because I've been watching Golden Girls. It's on Hulu if anyone's not sure where you can watch that at. But I've been watching, um, we started with season one and Eric even enjoys it, so it's been fun. But I was about right there. So that is progress from one hour of fencing class and then maybe like an hour, hour and a half of watching Golden Girls. So pretty good, I think. And I'm, I would say I'm probably about an inch away from the toe, starting the toe. Last night, I think I was like right there and I was like, surely I'm close. I measured and I had only knit five inches. And now for his socks, I have to knit eight inches before I start the toe. So his feet have definitely grown, but this yarn for this was a gift from Allison of Lofty Loops. She sent me half a skein of it and said that she thought that would be perfect for socks for Wyatt. And I think it's gonna be just enough. So the main yarn here is Lolo Did It in the Hippo for Thanksgiving colorway. The other color is just a mini that I had. I don't remember where it came from. Um, I'm really bad with minis about losing the tags or half skeins or I'm just bad. But I did ask last night and Allison said this is um, Hippo for Thanksgiving by Lolo Did It. So what I did before I started this sock was I split the yarn, I split the mini and the 50 gram skein that I had in half. I weighed them as I was rolling them up to make sure they were split as evenly as I could get. That way I could start one sock, work it down with the half of a mini, half of a 50 skein. And then if I get to the toe and I run out, I'll grab another collar that's, you know, here throughout. There are a couple of different colors I could choose from and just finish up the toe. So I did the cuff and the heel flap and turn in the gold color mini. And then I just thought I'm gonna go ahead and just throw the rest of this in, in the middle of the foot instead of saving it to see if it's enough for the toe. So I did just that. I did one big stripe with the gold and then a couple of smaller stripes. And I think it's looking super cute so far. It's different, it's fun. Sometimes I think you know, yeah, it's totally a mindless vanilla knitting if you just knit in one whole color, but I think it's fun to change it up sometimes and just play a little bit. So that's what I've been doing with this. And I'm using the Leica needles, Licky needles. Never sure the correct way to pronounce that. But that's what I'm using for these in the US 1 2.25 millimeter. And for white socks, I cast on 56 stitches. He can go up to a 64, but they are just a smidge baggy. They don't fit quite as snug. So I'm gonna stick with the 56 cast on for now. 
And I have this cute little, um, this is from the Gnome Knitter. It's a little sausage biscuit with cheddar and egg. I love those little things. So that is work in progress number one. That's going to kind of be a priority so that he at least has one more pair of socks. And then I have another sock that I just started yesterday because, you know, I need to be casting on more things. I don't, but I did. So this is in a bag that was a gift from AB Designs. It's a cute little sock perler bead on it. And I started a pair of socks for my neighbor's little girl, Lila. So I had her come over because I made Stephanie a pair of socks. Um, you'll have seen those, it was a while back on the podcast if you watched for a little while. And Lila said she wanted a pair. So I had her pick out the yarn a while back and I feel bad that I have not started them yet. So we have a basketball tournament coming up this weekend. So I knew I needed all the mindless sock knitting I could get. So I have Wyatt socks. I have my sock blank socks, which haven't really been worked on a row here and there. So not much progress to show. And then now I have this. So I'll have plenty to choose from this weekend. If I get one to a heel and I'm not, you know, at a spot within the tournament that I can do that heel, I can pick up another sock that's after the cuff or something, you know, something mindless. Should have plenty of options. So I have not done too much on this. But here's the yarn that Lila picked out. This is Felici in the hibiscus colorway, right? Yes, hibiscus. Super fun colorway. And then I am going to do gray for heels, toes, and cuffs. And this is also Knit Picks. It's their stroll fingering. And I'm working from a little mini right now that I had left of it but here's the full skein. This is the Dove Heather colorway. So this is all that I've done so far. Not much progress, <laughs> but it's a start. I started it yesterday when I was taking a break from getting some work stuff done. So got a little bit done. I'm gonna finish the cup hopefully today. And at the very least, just get this started. Do like two to three rounds so that it's ready to go for the leg. I feel like these should go pretty quickly. So Lila is, she's in kindergarten. So I asked my friend Jenny because she is a kindergartner as well. I said, how many stitches do you cast on for Mason? Because I did 52 for this and then I was so worried that it was too small. So Jenny said she does 52 for her kindergartner as well. So hopefully we're good. I did, I measured some measurements on Lila. Um, I measured around her leg, around her foot to kind of see the circumference that I thought, you know, would work well. And with my maths, I think 52 will be. The needles that I'm using are my signature DPNs, the US 1 2.25 millimeter. As always, very extremely rare that I ever use a different size needle for my socks. All right. That's it for works in progress. I have some other work designs and things like that going on, but none of them are really at a place I can show and a couple of them I just can't show. They're secret stuff. So we'll see those very soon. But let's see. Now let's talk about what's came in the mail since the last time we chatted. So I ordered this yarn a little while back and this is by I'm not sure how to pronounce this Molly made it oh I'm so sorry if that's wrong so there's her tag and look there's some fun light bulb stitch markers in different colors there and this is a self striping yarn look how fun that is so you've got the lighter speckly colors and then the darker I cannot wait to work this up definitely in the heel toe do -si do pattern and then it came with a midi that coordinates so matches that 
So I'll probably do the heel toe do -si do sock pattern for this and then do an afterthought heel with that. That's the plan for it. And then the only other thing that I ordered was a bag from Mountain State Stitches and it did not come with any of that. So let's show this side first. I saw this bag on her update and I was like, oh, that's perfect for putting all of my pins on. I really wanted something. My pins have just been sitting in a little rope bowl over there. I occasionally will pop a few on a project bag, but I didn't have one that was like, okay, this is for my pins. So I thought this would be perfect. So look at that shimmery fabric. And then it's got just a basic fabric on the bottom, which I love when they're like that. And then she does have a fun fabric on the inside. And like I thought it would be, it's perfect for my pins. So I've just got some that I've collected over the last year or so. And I think it's perfect. As I get more, I will add more. And that'll just be a fun little project bag to pull out and use. All right, a couple things that were sent for prizes for the podcast from AB Designs, who did this bag as a gift a while back. She sent a couple more project bags, which was just so kind of her to send more to use as giveaways for the podcast. So the first one is this, and this is such a fun design. I think this would be perfect for socks. Great for two at a time socks, if you're a two at a time sock knitter. I'm going to zip it up here so you can see it fully popped up. Look at that. It's like a little rectangle. It's all boxed. I just think that's perfect. You got room for two cakes of yarn and then your little notions. Great for two at a time socks. So she sent us that one and then she also sent a Halloween themed one. That is so cute. It has a purple and there's a zipper and the zipper's in green, perfect for Halloween. And it is a boxed bottom. So head over, I'll be sure to link all of these shops that I'm talking about down below so that you guys can check them out. And actually, since today is the podcast anniversary, I am doing a birthday month giveaway because I guess it's my birthday and it's the podcast birthday. So I did announce a giveaway on the last episode for a birthday month giveaway and that's going to be open for a little while longer and we'll pick a prize winner later on in the month for that. But let's do a giveaway this podcast for this AB Designs bag. So I'm going to link the shop down below. I want you guys to, if you get a moment, head over and check out her shop. Let me know your favorite bag or item. She also has um, like these embroidery pouches. She has some different ones of those. So head over and leave me a comment down below. And then next episode, I will draw a winner for this bag for the three year podcast anniversary. Last thing I have to share with you guys today, I just received yesterday. So this is from Autumn of Aut Marie Makes. And she sent this sock set for a giveaway for the podcast. So this is Agrabah and Jeannie Mini. It's on her 70-25 base, so 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina, 100 grams, 463 yards. Such a fun skein of yarn. So why don't we just go ahead and we'll do these two together since they were both sent for podcast giveaways. Let's just do these two together. So this will be the three year podcast anniversary prize. And I will link Autumn's shop and I will link the AB Design shop. 
So you guys head over to their shops. The links will be below. Let me know something that you like from their shops and we'll draw a winner next episode. Then Autumn also sent over a little goodie for me. So there's this super fun, small drawstring bag that I think is the perfect size for socks. And she sent a ball of self-striping. So this is just a one of a kind. I think that's super fun. It's gonna be fun to knit it up. And this one is also, or no, I'm sorry. I was gonna say this is also on the same base, but this does not have Stellina in it. This is her 75% um, percent superwash merino, 25% nylon, 100 grams to 436 yards. So that'll be a lot of fun to knit up and it's gonna live right in there when I do. So I think that is pretty much it for the day. So things that have been going on, not much since it's only been a week, just the same old stuff. Um, this weekend we do have a basketball tournament for Austin. Thank you guys so much for all of your kind words about um, when I talked about his injury, his feet issues last episode. We go this next coming week to get the orthotics. So. We're excited to see the change that it makes. His heel has been feeling better with the inserts that the um, podiatrist did put in. So that is good. He's excited to play in the tournament this weekend and we're hoping that goes well and he doesn't have, have pain with, with playing all weekend. My birthday is this weekend on Sunday. I'm sure we'll be at a basketball game, but it'll be fun. I love watching Austin play. So that's kind of a great way to spend been my birthday I think and then we have the Mumford and Sons concert on Monday I can't wait it's gonna be so amazing I'm so excited to be seeing them again I'm pretty much obsessed <laughs> I told my husband yesterday we have five more days and he was like ha ha I said aren't you excited he said not as excited as you <laughs> I said I doubt that many people are <laughs> But anyways, I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this week's episode. I was glad to be back just after one week since the last episode. I just feel so much better when I don't have a ton of things surrounding me to talk about. It seems a little less overwhelming. So I may try to record next week before I head to Flagstaff. I'm not sure time-wise how it will work out. So there may not be an episode next week. There may be one the following week, but we shall see. But regardless, I hope that you guys get a ton of knitting done between now and the next time we get to sit down and I will talk to you soon. Bye.